VIP access with Aniko and Africa Loud. Welcome to episode four of VIP Access. Today I'm speaking to a young lady who I absolutely love. Her music is amazing. You know, I'm an R&B girl at heart. So when she came out into the industry singing R&B soul, alte music, it really spoke to me. In the beginning, it seemed like it's very niche mu- type of music, but she's really worked hard um, in her career in the industry to an extent where she's now become a household name. She's doubling between Kenya and USA, and I'm very happy to speak to her in regards to her most recent projects. This is Zinia Manasse. Hey, Hi. what's up, girl? That was so nice. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I'm good. Nice to see you. Nice to see you as well. Oh my God, we're always talking like on the WhatsApp and like since COVID, we haven't like we kind of um, lost contact. And you know, I'm happy to to have seen you do your thing. Yeah. You know, coming from a tour in America, coming from releasing a new record with Ukweli. How has it been for you since COVID? It's been amazing um, because I feel like a lot of things, I feel like by the end of 2019, things had started picking up for me here. And then like 2020 started, then there was like blankets and wine. And then it was like gigs were just coming like a month, this month, this month, this month. And then COVID started, but it didn't change the fact that there was already like some sort of impact that I had had Mm -hmm. so like there was there's been so many amazing things that have happened to me since then and till now because I guess I never stopped doing what I was doing yeah 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 so you know before 2019 before your first EP in that came out falling apart which is amazing like genius you were actually studying and living in America you at the Berkeley Music School Mm -hmm. Um, how did you end up there? You know, did you always know that I want to go to Berkeley and study music? Because obviously it's a renowned school. I know Karun was there. Um, I think, I don't know, there's some certain people in the industry who've gone there, but not too many people. Um, and this is a school that even Americans want to go into this school. You know, it's not that this, it's not the school for everyone, but very few selected students get in. So how did you get there and what did that mean to you? Um, I'm smiling because I didn't really realize how I went about it until like a few months ago. Um, and I was actually talking to Quelly and he asked me the same question. And like, he was like, he mentioned a quote from um, a basketball player that was like never give yourself a plan b because that means that you already believe that your plan a isn't gonna work out and I was like huh so in high school I I did IB and um, all the courses I took were for me to do a degree in law and then when the window to op- uh, apply for unis came I only applied to two music schools and then I, I got into both of them um And Berkeley, I got into Berkeley, but then I didn't have a scholarship. But then, like, I was like, there's no way (laughs) that you guys are taking this thing away from me. So even at graduation, like, I said that that's where I was going, knowing that I had no idea if I really was even going to go, just based off being accepted. And, like, two weeks before the semester started, I got a scholarship. Oh, wow. Wow. You had your vision on lock yeah. you're like i'm going to Berkeley. Yeah. i don't know how but i Delusion. intend to and you got your scholarship i got it and how was that experience like you know being there then this must be a super creative place to be all, around all these creatives and music makers and musicians and i don't know like what's the experience like being at Berkeley? it was incredible of course just like waking up and breathing music like it's everywhere you know like there's there's literally no breaks from it like during lunch there's people sitting in the lobby like practicing playing you're hearing things everywhere you go and then you don't realize until you leave that you are kind of it almost feels like I was like in a different universe 
Because, like, everything is just about music. Like, people are hearing music in, like, the cars passing outside or the traffic lights or the, you know, it's everywhere. And then you go back into the real world and it's like, oh, my God, I'm the only one that's hearing music <laughs> all everywhere. these things. Yeah. <laughs> but it was so nice. It was refreshing. I feel like just being in a setting like that pushes you to become better because you're just around it every day even though you're not like um intentionally interacting with it mm. um and you learn so much yeah it just it like put all the pieces together together, together. so you 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 finish your time at Berkeley you come back to Kenya um had you already started recording your first EP that you released in 2019 and then how did you find the Kenya industry to to take you? You know, you know. At that time, I feel like you are a pioneer of sorts when it comes to this type of music. Like you couldn't find so many artists singing that type of sound or R and B or so. But you've always stuck to who you were then and who you are now. And I guess because you stuck to your identity, you then started making a name for yourself. You know, gigs started coming and all that. But in the very beginning. How did you perceive the industry or how did it perceive you? Um, well, number one, I recorded So Fallen Apart, the title track. That was my first single, which was released in 2017. Mm -hmm. um, it was one of the first songs I ever wrote. So that was like right before I finished school. And then it was like, okay, I still didn't consider myself like a writer not even an artist I just was happy that I had like recorded something mm. written something and put something out um, by the time I came home I had recorded every other song on the project in Atlanta because mm -hmm. I moved there after graduation for like six months and then I came home and I always say that I feel like I came home at such a perfect time because even though I felt like I didn't see a lot of R&B artists um the reception was the opposite. Like people were so open to my sound and like wanting to see more people like me or people that do the same kind of like yeah. music as me, like be put on the same stages. Yeah. And it's just It was grown. almost like there was uh, this wave. Yeah. And it started like with you and others, but there was a wave and that's it's going. And it's still ongoing. It's going. <laughs> what? But it was, it was and has been better than I could have imagined. Oh, that's yeah. really amazing. Yeah. I think that's so amazing to hear because a lot of people who have had a chance to operate in other industries will always have something to say like, oh, it's not so much better here because of this and that. But I think for you to feel like, I didn't even expect it to this to be this good to me and I'm having a good time and my career is flourishing is is a really good sign. Yeah. Um and talking of great signs and great things um this year you are also named by Apple Music as one of the artists to look forward to in 2023. Big ups. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that yeah. is so amazing. You know these things make me so proud because uh, working in PR across the continent, you know, you always see all these other artists from other regions profiled, you mm. know, and, and it's not like they're any more cooler than we are or than just artists from this region are. It's just like we don't get noticed like that. We don't get the right placement, yet we deserve to get it. So to see a, a, such a worthy artist, you know, on that, and then you're also on the R&B um, the Soul September campaign. I was just so happy for you. <laughs> How was it when that moment came about? Did that you expect was, it? No, it was <laughs> so cool. And I was I was in the US also. Yeah. When they emailed us about it, and I was like, "What? That's so crazy." Um, I had no idea where it came from. I also took like a random trip to south africa in 2021 mm -hmm. um and i did meet like a lot of artists there but i hadn't gone there with the intention of doing any music yeah. and music just like came and i f i was like is that what this trip has brought into my life you know i didn't know where it came from um i found out that um karun I th was the one that recommended me which i was like oh my god that's so sweet but i was like you guys want me to 
you know, just have my own thing and just like showcase what I listen to and you guys want to know more about like what I'm about. Since 2019, you know, your career just took off into different ways. You know, you started collaborating with more artists. Uh, maybe if you would take me through the journey of various collaborations and what you feel that brought um, to your career or that brought to you as an individual because you're saying when I recorded my first track I was just happy I put something down I wasn't really looking at myself as an artist like that but I think now you must have had a different maybe um, perception of your own self because of the type of artist who want to work with you so there was a big collaboration you had with Saudi Soul in their um, last album, how did that come about? Because I think you're in so many tracks in that album. I feel like it just happened because we had been recording with them. Like from when I came home, one of the few people that I would regularly interact with was like Ben Soul and Viri. Like I would always go to Soul Gen. Um, whenever I was booked for shows, I would rehearse there. So I was like always there. Mm -hmm. um, and Polycarp, I know Polycarp especially, um, had wanted me and Lisa to do backing vocals. And I think we, I think it started maybe with Nyombe by Ben Soul. And mm. then from there, we just ended up like always coming back. And then they're like, okay, we want you to do this song. And we want you to do this song. And we're like, say the least, we are coming. We're coming, we're coming. And it's fun. Like that's one of my favorite things to do is like to come up with vocals and arrange vocals like I love being put hey, in that you space people went all out you all sound so beautiful like you and Lisa together hey that's my girl you 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 both of you did she also go to Berkeley she did I she think did. she did she's the person I was trying to remember who's there, the other Berkeley girl she did and Karun was my roommate actually was she so you guys go way back mm. all of us which is so crazy and we all came back and you all have fantastic, like, EPs out. Yo, that's nice. Yeah. That's nice. And then um, Empower happened during COVID. Mm. Um, and I don't. I, I think it's not just that Empower happened. I think a lot of things have happened for you, especially digitally, since COVID. Yeah. Oh, my God. I the did covers. So many, you yeah. did so many. I haven't matched my, my videos from 2020. And the views and the shares. Girl, like, you're so good at that. It's beyond me. I mean, I get surprised every time, you know. I don't know why, but I just, I guess because I don't do it really thinking about how it's going to be received. I'm just like, hmm, I really like the song, and I want to see how it sounds, like, when I, you know, put a spin on it. And then I'm just like, yep, let it out into the world. And every single time, like, the reception has just been, like, what I can't <laughs> believe this guys I'm like I'm just singing in my room you know I'm just having fun maybe that's what it is I'm always having fun that's nice it. like when you're having fun and and who's always uh, you know co-producing this covers with you a lot of the ones that I did I downloaded the instrumentals from YouTube uh -huh. and then I just like record my vocals uh -huh. and then I send um to Mombru who produced pretty much all of Fallen Apart yeah. um, to do mixes for me. Um, and then we just post. But then I've started mixing. I've started learning mixing. So the next cover that I post, I'm actually going to post one soon. I mixed it. <laughs> so I'm waiting to see so that I can stop being scared and just <laughs> venture out into something oh, new. Oh, fantastic. So even growing further into production, I love it. I love it. I mean, Karun is now producing mm -hmm. her own music, mm -hmm. so why not? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So then, you know, that happened. Empower happened. You got onto Empower and you're, you know, part of the 30, top 30 um, from the continent. Unfortunately, there wasn't travels and the workshops and stuff like that, like usual because of COVID. But then I think out of it came a, an opportunity to collaborate with Mr. Easy. Mm -hmm. um, is that even something that you thought that you'd be collaborating with such a major, you know, global star? And mm -hmm. how was the experience working with him? That was so crazy. I actually, it was just so crazy. It happened because um, the Loki video came out and he sent me a message. He was like, yo, 
where did you shoot this thing? <laughs> and I was like, in Nairobi, he was like, for real? And they just felt like we had used the grant um, really well, and he liked my voice. And then like a month late, no, that same month, they asked me if I could um, do a verse to Cherry. Mm. And then it came out two months later, and I was like, whoa. Didn't even, you know, just here continuing to do things because I like to do them, and then... They just end up in the places that they end up. You also have a song with uh, one of my favorite artists from Nigeria who we were also PRing, um, promoting his EP, Idahams. How did that come about? Lagos. Ah, to Lagos. That was a nice one. That song is nice. Yeah, but I didn't record it with him in Lagos. Ah. So we went to Lagos and we did some sessions there. And one of the guys, I think, was a and ing for mm. him and so he sent it um to our team and kina Pfizer were like z do you wanna write to this one and i was like yeah i was writing a lot at that time so i did it in nairobi in my house and then sent it over and then it came out in september and i was like another one <laughs> i like how you um kind of downplaying everything you're like I'm just having fun. That's I mean, really me. How do you get to write songs for the likes of Tiana Taylor? You know, you wrote some songs in, in her album and even one of the songs is um, together with Big Sean and so many other writing credits and so many other, um, for so, for other artists. So how, how did those opportunities come about? I want to say, at least with Tiana Taylor, I don't really have much of an answer as to how it came together. I want to say for now, I feel like it's a combination of like being prepared and like being um, aware of what I can deliver mm -hmm. when I'm put in the room and then being in the right time, right mm -hmm. place, right the time. right time. Yeah. Because um, I know, put me in the studio, like I know that I will write something. I have no question about it. Um, so yeah, like, like I can say like when I went to the US um, a few months ago, like when I went to LA, I just went and like every other day someone is like, you're here, come through. And I'm like, of course. And I just go and I know that they know as well and they we just match. And that's how all this stuff happens. The Tiana Taylor one though, um, I don't know. Cause I wrote those songs two years before they ended up on her album. Those songs were done in 2018, and her album came out in 2020. And that process was really long. I, the album had like almost 20 songs, so but, you never really know. But did she already have the songs from 2018? She had heard. She had heard them. Yeah. Okay. So that one, I guess, is just through the through the label. So UCMG, because mm. there's um there's the managers, there's the A and R's. So the A and R's, like we would go to the studio four or five times a week. Um, after every session. All the songs are uploaded, put in a folder, mm. sent the next morning to anybody that's looking for okay. music. So how, how does it actually work with the songwriting and the songwriters like you are, like professional songwriters? Because we do have the other artists who are songwriting for themselves and not for other people, but you also write for other people. So do you actually decide that these are my songs and I'm writing these to give them out to whoever wants to buy them? And um, how many songs then do you actually put out there? And what's the process between the time you put them out there and you hear back from someone who's interested? Mm -hmm. So now, again, with the example of the Tiana Taylor one, I had been told that uh, one song had placed on her album, but that was like beginning of 2019. And then the whole of 2019 passed and there was no album. Then 2020 started and there was no album. And then like a month before, they're like, your song made it, and you made an, you got another song on there as well. So random. I literally feel like you never know unless you have a personal connection to the artist and mm. you, you are in the studio with yeah, them yeah, and you yeah, know, yeah, like, yeah. yeah, this is going. Yeah. The rest of it, like, they send out monthly, like, which artists are looking for music, um, what kind of music they're looking for, and then you just pitch. It's like pitching. Mm. You just pitch and hope for the best. Wow, that's amazing. So this is your you know, label doing this UCMG in America. So they'll let you know these and these artists are looking for this type of music. Mm -hmm. And are you writing 
only sort of R&B soulful tracks or have you written others as well? Yeah, I think once I started songwriting, I just wanted to explore every genre mm. um, that I could because I'm like, okay, the basis of this is like my identity, I guess. Yeah. And I want to see how or what that looks like across genres. Like what does Z bring to anything new? Yeah. Yeah. And that makes it fun. It's just now like experimenting and then learning um diversifying so is it is it more lucrative um when a-list artists buy your song do they actually do like a payoff and then you get their royalties or do they only do you only get paid via royalties um so they separate for songwriters and producers mm -hmm. i don't know if it's changing but like producers are the ones that usually get uh, a fee okay and then songwriters get publishing and royalties mm -hmm. Um, and then that's split with the artist. Mm. Um, so depending on who they are, like I, I know of some A-list celebrities who mm. even if they didn't write the song, they'll still get like 70 or 80% mm. of it and then the other 20% is yeah. split amongst the writers. But it makes sense at the same time because they do make a lot of money. So it's not like that 20% is something, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like peanuts, peanuts, it's significant wow that's amazing so this is something you're getting into full out like the songwriting and you know constantly putting out the songs there have you thought of writing for you know other you know african artists or artists from all around the world or have you gotten those requests because you could have you know maybe gotten people dming you saying could you write me a song how how are the DMs looking? The DMs, well, the DMs are looking poor because I'm <laughs> poor at the DMing. But um, I have written for some African artists um, and I'm hoping to write for more. But I, the more spaces that I've entered, it's been co-writes, which I actually think is exciting. Like, I'd, I feel like I'd much rather know that there's more people in the room that, like, can do the same thing or are trying to do the same yeah, thing as opposed to, yeah. But the balance still has to yeah. be there. There are some people that still just need the songs. Yeah. yeah. And and who inspires, you know, you, your music? Like who are the artists who, you know, used to listen to growing up or you're even listening to them now? Like what are the kind of sounds, like what would Xenia's playlist sound like? I think I had the, the Soul September um, your playlist on that, but generally, like, what's your type of music? I'm a neo soul baby. My mom played so much neo soul growing up, so like my long standing favorites are Indiari, Lauren Hill, Jill Scott, mm. like Erica Badu. Um, then there's like the R and B gals now, like Aaliyah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Sometimes your style like kind of reminds yeah. me of her. The dancing yeah, as well, because you're the, sleek on the dance, egg. on the stage like that. <laughs> well, I'm B, yeah. Um, yeah, them and then like newer ones. I want to say when I, when I went to Berkeley, I started listening to a lot more male R&B singers. Mm. So like Ty Dolla Sign, um, DJ cool. the Chicago Kid. Yeah, those kinds of people. And then all of it just came together to just create my sound oh alex isley can't forget alex isley mm. ever um but yeah there's just but there's a lot yeah there's, there's a, a lot. lot and then also berkeley is a jazz school so we always had to do like jazz you had to do classical and then the songs of your choice as yeah. well yeah so you learn a little bit from everywhere bit everywhere i think it's rather obvious that you two should be doing songs together and you gave us this collaboration how else are you going to work more with these type of producers or artists? Are we going to see more of these collaborations from you? Um, what is what, what are the plans for 2023? 2023, my album is coming out, finally. Um, so one of the things that I did do during COVID was finish my album. Um, it's just that the project with Ukweli came out before which is interesting. We started working on it after COVID and, well, not after COVID, but after 2020. Mm. And we put it out 
before my album came out. So I've had my album for like two years. Um, it's coming out this year. Wow, and it's been ready all this time. It's been ready. We're only missing one feature. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we just had to talk to people, make sure it gets like the right home. Of course. Um, so that's happening. Also, between co COVID and now, I've worked with multiple producers on just like, just because I, I, I collect a lot of beats. And so like, I was going back and listening to a lot of the music that I, I liked, that I had written. And I'm like, oh my God, I have like five songs with this person. This can be a project. I have like 10 songs with this person. This can be a project. And all of them are like just the way it is with Ukweli and I. Mm. Um, and yeah, the way that project is being received is blowing our mind. Like you couldn't tell us that this is how it was going to go. Like every day we find out something new and we're just like... Yeah, man, there's a lot of wins. Like I saw some nice placements on Spotify, on Apple, your like album of the EP or album of the month. Every day we don't, we're just like, what? <laughs> I wake up and he's like, have you seen this? And I'm like, no, what's happened now? <laughs> it's been like that for the last two months. It's amazing. But it must though. be amazing to, you know, to see your work being celebrated that way, you know, being received well, you know, you put in so much work and sometimes you're like, well, I don't know if they're going to like it. But then it's it's a really nice, you know, time for you and, you know, what you're doing. I think it's actually maybe the the right time for the album. Mm -hmm. I think you know, maybe so the well. delay meant no coincidences. something. No yeah. coincidences. Yeah. No coincidences. Who are the features in the album or who are, mm. who are helping you songwrite or... Who is producing? I know I know how it is. Like, you can't say everything. Yeah, I'm not going to say everything. But most of my features, I want to say, are... I was going to say most of my features were Kenyan artists, but let me rephrase. All the features that I have now are African artists. Okay. Yeah, which is cool. That was not the initial plan. Like, when we thought the album was coming out three years ago, like, the names that we had were completely different. And now that it is the way it is now, I'm like, ooh, this is so much nicer to know that these are all African artists. There's Kenyans, there's people from the South, people from the West, people from all over. Um, but it's it's overall, I'm just observing, you know. And then you also never know what people are going to like. You yeah, gotta, you, you got to show people know. what they like. Yeah. You just throw it out there and maybe they're like, oh my God, this is different. I like it. Is, and is it going to be in the album? <laughs> it's not even something that I had even thought about. We're still missing a feature. Maybe. He could be a good one. And, and he likes you. you know. Yeah. He's You're a an cool empowered guy. baby. He's a really cool He's guy. He's a cool guy. <laughs> so maybe it could be the last feature. Maybe. Possibly. Yeah. So you spent some time um, back in America recently um, how was that? And, and are you intending to go back again? You had a couple of shows there. I did. Um, being in the U.S. was so refreshing because when I left in 2018, I knew that I was coming back in like two months, three months, mm. not four years. I was home for four whole years before touching ground again. But I had built... Um, so much on that side already that was the thing that was making me feel so like ah why can't i go back yeah, why can't yeah, i because yeah. i was like i want to see my people i want to continue where we left off like in a proper way where we can be in the same space and all of that so going back from day one was just like oh my god my friends my <laughs> and then we all went to berkeley so it was like yeah. going back into just being around music yeah, yeah, yeah. all the time um so refreshing and then Again, like not really having a plan to make music, but knowing that it was going to happen mm -hmm. and just going places and letting people know that I was there and then seeing. So I did writing camps. I did one camp in L.A. I did one in Tennessee, um, which were which were amazing. It was so nice to meet more creatives because um, I don't think I've really been a part of a camp here. And that's also something that now I want to do. Mm. Um, but all those things were so refreshing. And then also I realized every place that I go to, I write different music. So it was also nice hearing what that sounded like. Mm. Yeah. What What's happening at the writing camps? Like how does a day go? So, so there's other songwriters and musicians mm -hmm. and what, then what? 
So for the one in LA, that was a bigger one. So they rented out this whole compound that has like, I want to say like 20 to 30 studios. Whoa. Yeah. And um, just like small, small, small rooms. Mm. They'll put like two writers, a producer or two producers in a room, an engineer. And they're just like, yeah, either create or play something that you have or share ideas, bounce everything around and then come up with stuff. So for majority of them, I mean, you're doing like two songs in like three, four hours. Mm. Um I like to avoid rooms with too many people. I feel like that's when ideas get crossed. But then that's really the process of it. It's just put all the right people needed in the room and mm -hmm. then just leave them to make music. Sometimes we get briefs. Um, sometimes they come in saying, you guys are doing something for this specific artist and this is a project that they're working on this is what the project is about do something in this so angle. sometimes the songs coming out of the camps could be pitched to different projects all of them out are there. pitched or oh, usually they will be pitched all of them fantastic i didn't know that part mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i think i explained everything why you're not at another songwriting camp in ghana oh my god yes you almost forgot about that <laughs> Girl, yes. I'm following your life yes, yes, yes. <laughs> better than you yourself. Oh my God, no, because yes. it was in between the And I think I even saw Thames was there. Mm -hmm. Something with YouTube. Mm -hmm. See, I know these things. Tell us. That was crazy. Share. That was crazy. That's also when I realized, oh my God, like, I'm actually doing this thing. Like, now I'm actually able to, like, move all around because I was in the States. Yeah, you've been all everywhere. You mm -hmm. went to South Africa, you've been to Ghana, you've been in America, you've been in all the right spaces, For markets, music. and with the same, with the right people. Mm -hmm. Like, Except damn. London. I need to, London, I'm coming. Yeah. I need to, that's the one place now that's left. Um, um, but yeah, I think we got asked to do that maybe like a week before. And I was like, oh, I don't know if it's happening. And then like, they were like, yep, it's happening and there was next thing I know I was in Ghana for like a weekend but it was amazing it was everything that everybody has described it to be it was so warm um and it was so fun because that one was specifically a all girls yeah camp so it was so dope meeting um female producers and writers and just seeing how all of us were coming together and seeing what we were creating. And we had so much fun. We were all like, no, it's over so soon. <laughs> we didn't want to leave each other. Wow, that was fun. Well, the other artists forgotten? were there. I think I saw Karun. Yeah, Karun was there. Thames. It was like, uh, yeah. So so the we were doing stuff for Thames and Jackie. Mm. Um, there was like Lock the Plug. There was Kay from South Africa. There's Melissa, who's Ghanaian. Mm -hmm. Her sister is called Molly. Molly's an artist who had actually asked to be on my album. Nice. But then didn't know she had a sister. And then her sister was in the camp. And I saw her and I'm like, you look so familiar. Um, but she's really cool. She's a producer, songwriter. Um, wow. We were like 10 of us. Duni was there. Sazi producers as well. Dooney's also an artist. I feel like I'm forgetting some names. They're but it's so nice if you're writing for, the, for for Thames and Jackie, but they also had a chance to be there with you. Yeah. You and know. we actually just got to like talk about stuff, which for me was my favorite part. I'm like, yeah, writing is cool, but we do this every day. Like, you know, I can wake up any day and just write. But to get to talk to somebody that's doing exactly what I'm doing, yeah. though I'm here for a different reason, yeah. and hearing their experience and processes, very refreshing. So what was that like? I mean, what was she saying? Like, you know, being around the world and being back to, 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 to Africa, to Ghana, to meeting you all, like... We talked about... She... Um, we talked about her recording process mm -hmm. though I don't know if I'm supposed to disclose mm -hmm. that information as in the specifics okay. of it but we did talk about um how she records how she um gets comfortable mm -hmm. um and yeah just 
yes yeah, just, I've just the process, the process yeah you know making music and writing and all that 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 makes sense since it's a writing camp mm. um yeah so i mean it's been really great to sit down with you and talk to you since you came in 2019 till now you've really done a lot of things so it's really nice to like just touch base and to be able to look at your journey and be able to celebrate you and i just wanted to say to you that you're so awesome you are so talented you are so unique and so different so much that i believe in you very very much like i see you going places i see you you know making us proud and i see you um with the R&B giants i mean you're writing for tana taylor so i wouldn't be surprised if to proceed to proceed more bigger things are happening for you this year and most importantly i wish you well as you release your debut album um i'll be here to support as always thank you gosh <laughs> i'm blushing i'm like i can't even stop smiling thank you I'm done. thank you for I'm having done. me and for always supporting me you have from that studio session at super sunny yeah, yeah 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 that's how we met so Yeah, all the best with the, with your career. Um if there's anything you wanted to say to your fans who are watching or listening, um you could tell them something. What do you want to tell them? I guess I just say be on the lookout for my album. We're going crazy and that's not the only thing to look out for. Just expect to see me in more spaces. Um and expect to see me push myself and I hope that encourages you to do the same. And it's always love. Thank you so much. Um it's been amazing talking to Zinia Manase on my podcast VIP Access. Uh next week I'll possibly be talking to somebody as cool as Zinia, so keep it here and thank you so much for always supporting. VIP Access. VIP Access. Zinico on Africa Loud.